Hello everyone, welcome to This Week in Stupid for the 22 of August 2020. I'm going to do something heretical and play you a clip which did not happen this week, but I think it's very important since I just found out about it. And I want you all to see the struggle that women have to go through in this patriarchal society. All right, on another issue, what is the gender workplace hours gap? The agency reports a workplace gender pay gap comparing male full-time employees and female full-time employees. But male full-time employees work longer hours on average than female full-time employees. And the agency doesn't account for this when reporting a workplace gender pay gap. Using ABS data, on employee earnings and hours, the gender pay gap as at May 2016 was 15.7%. It is a survey, it is a survey of employees, that information from the ABS, it's not a census, um, and it's only conducted every two years, they only collect the data every two years. Um, what we do do is we annualise our figure to full-time. So we look at all part-time employees and full-time employees that may have worked part of a 12-month period and we, uh, we annualise that data to take into account part-time hours. Um, so therefore we're converting the part-time hours to full-time, if you like. So do so do you take into account the fact that on average a male full-time employee works longer hours than a female full-time employee? N not directly, no. You don't? We an but we annualise the part-time hours and those that have worked full-time but for part of the year. So that way, because at the moment, uh, what I can tell you is w women work part-time at three times the rate of men. Mm. So by annualising it, we are looking at a, a more um, mm -hmm. realistic... So based on an annual salary. Yeah. What about if you did it on an hourly rate? What would be the gender hourly pay gap? Well, we don't have that data, Senator. You don't have that data? No, because we ask for annualised salaries because, uh, and from our employers when they report their data in. Okay, so if, uh, if a woman was working fewer hours but earning the same uh, rate per hour as a man doing the same job, would that show up as a gender pay gap? No. But, well then in that case you are looking at, uh, hourly, at, at hourly rates. Can you believe this nonsense? Can you believe this is what strong, independent women have to put up with whenever they try to make a point? Evil men asking questions. I mean, look at this guy, right? Like He, he looks like the head of the patriarchy. When, when all of us guys get together and we conspire against women, th this is who our leader is. And these women are having a difficult time because he keeps harassing them, doesn't he? You know, like, it's already established that mansplaining is bad. Uh, I think we should now have man questioning. Another thing. And anyone that does man questioning should be fired as well. Which reminds me, we should talk about who got cancelled this week. It's a segment that's very interesting, but I always keep forgetting about it. So, in order to make sure I don't, I'll talk about it here in the opening. There is this channel that I don't watch, but apparently Leafy was here. Um, no, Leafy isn't here anymore. Uh, Leafy is gone. Uh, apparently, he had the audacity to do something that in 2015 was not only accepted, but it was also quite popular. A lot of people wanted to see that, but thanks for YouTube and the good censors at Google, uh, we are being protected from this evil type of response videos, you know, like uh, Christians versus atheists, uh, Sargon of Akan versus the bedroom feminist. Okay? Now, none of these are allowed on the platform anymore, no more drama. And uh, Leafy got the ban. Now, a lot of other decent, moral, and upstanding creators decided to weigh in. And as you can see here, you can pause the video anytime and read these things. There, there are too many and it would take a lot for me to go through them. 
but they're all very happy, basically. They're all agreeing. Uh, my favorite person of the day, the most moral among all of them, the, the most pure of heart, the one who did absolutely no wrong must be Ethan Klein. Have you seen Ethan Klein making any drama? Have you seen Ethan Klein ever attacking some other creator? Have you seen him do anything bad? I have never seen him. And, and you know, like, it, it's so great that we have these moral individuals in our community that in moments like these, they're, they're like a beacon of light that we can all rally behind and be like, uh, I wish, I wish I would have the moral fiber to be even half the man Ethan Klein is. But here's my advice to Leafy. Okay, Leafy, listen up. Be like me. Join the left. Join the left and the rules just stop applying to you. Why do you think so many sociopaths are on the left? Like, they found the niche. They found the ideology which allows people to behave in any unsocial way they please, break all the rules, and nothing bad will happen to them. For example, look, here is this lovely lady. Now, if you're familiar with the Twitter, you're not allowed to dox, encourage people to dox, bullying and harassment is wrong. And I want to point out that Jack, Jack himself, Jack the Dorsey, is following this lady. So it's not like he couldn't see this. And apparently... She said, does anyone have high quality images of the Trump boat rally that shows both names or registration numbers so that I can start doxing? Well, like she, she's actually saying what she is going to do. But notice, because she is smart, she is a very smart woman with high IQ, she is a left-leaning person. And as such, the rules do not apply to her. Do you know who the rules apply to? People who try to mock the left, people who make parody accounts. Titania McGrath, all right, like she's a stupid person because she is mocking the left. You're not allowed to do this. Babylon B, account suspended. Imagine a world where people would be allowed to hear what the Babylon B has to say. Their jokes ruin the fabric of society. How can we have a progressive left-leading society with the Babylon B allowing to spew their jokes? Here we go, Little Larry, model, travel, fashion vlogger, boom, account suspended. All these people, right? What they have in common is that they mock the left. Here we got one more, diversity patrol. You know, how, how can you make fun of, of diversity? Do these people not hold anything sacred? What is wrong with them? Here we got guy 2 plus 2 equals 5 Verhofstadt, parody account. How can you make fun of a man like Verhofstadt? Oh my God, he even wrote it. Look at this, he wrote it, Verschhofstadt. No, 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 like this, this is this is good. Like Twitter needs to step in. And notice, 15 plus 7,000 followers. I think they should be banned as well. I mean, they've been exposed to this. They, they, they listen to these jokes. It's unacceptable. Like now these people are on the wild. They, they are free to rob the internet and spread the jokes that they heard this to other innocent people. I, I think they all should be locked up. Do you not agree? And if you disagree, speak up now so I can ban you. That's how you get people to agree with you. You eliminate the people who disagree, and then you have consensus. Isn't that democracy? Isn't, isn't this how it works? No more controversy. Like, anything stops being a controversy when you ban the people disagreeing. And speaking on the topic of diversity, here we have an asshole, actually something even worse than an asshole, a police officer, a polizai, right? And he is complaining now. He is whining. He points out that he was put in charge of a hotel quarantine operations at Melbourne. And he only got a diversity training, but was given no formal instruction on how to use personal protective equipment. Why, why do you need formal instruction? All you need is the diversity training, man. I mean, do you actually expect the government to spend taxpayer money in order to hire doctors so that they can teach you about how to do hotel quarantine operations? Are you crazy? Like, do you not understand how important diversity officers are? Like, they need that money. They need to be paid. You can go on the internet and you can look up on how to do quarantine operations. Why, why do you need, why do you need doctors to tell you that? Right, like, you got the essentials. You got the, the most important thing, which is the diversity training. 
and then you sh you're expected to do your job. Stop complaining, Jesus. I'm going to I'm going to change this page. Like just looking at him makes me uncomfortable. And I understand that some of you are laughing and that you don't understand the seriousness of the situation. And maybe I can get to you. Maybe I can reach these kids in my subscriber section. Look, diversity gets rid of the virus. Here's an example. You see Greater Manchester Police. These are people that actually know how to do their job, okay? The UK police is renowned for being very racially aware. So officers attended the property in Swinton where three families, can you imagine this? Three families, not one, not two, three, dry. They were going for the hat trick. Were celebrating a child's birthday in a private garden. How dare they? How dare they? Do they not understand that Britain is a socialist state? There is no private anymore. Everything is public, okay? The homeowner has been issued with a fixed penalty notion. Good. That's, that's how the law should work. You break the law, there is no compassion. You pay the fine. But then, in Manchester, a lot of people are saying, well, look how many people there's in Manchester. And they were so many that the roads have to be closed the second time in a week after hundreds of people gathered in the street to celebrate Afghan Independence Day. And the reason is that there is no virus. There is just diversity. See? Like, when you celebrate someone's birthday in a private garden that is the pandemic but when you celebrate independence day of afghanistan it's just multiculturalism and this is happening because the people in the west are too innocent they just don't understand things um you need someone from eastern europe that have lived through socialism in order to explain these things to you equality is amazing especially when some people are more equal than others that's how it works I mean, look at this one, right? So you have Chicago police ban protests on Mayor Lori's Lightfoot block. So you can protest everywhere you want, all right? Like you're free to protest unless you go next to the mayor's house, in which case a barrier has to be set, right? So if you're in Chicago and you have protesters that are getting a little bit agitated, the, the peacefulness of the protest intensifies, and you're wondering where the cops are, they're defending the mayor, right? Because the mayor is the most important thing in a society. What would you do without the mayor? I mean, think about it, right? Like if you remain without a business, who do you look in order to help you? The mayor. But if the mayor doesn't exist, then what do you do? Panic, right? Like the, the, the society cannot function without the mayor. And she goes and says that um, she got death threats and uh, apparently she has the right. She has the right to keep her house safe. How can you disagree with that? How can you disagree with something like Stop being so selfish, man. Like, stop being so selfish. Like, you need to understand that you need empathy. You need to consider her situation. Just consider it. Like, maybe you would want cops at your door, but that's not how it happens. All right? You're not as important. If you want to be important, run for the elections, become the mayor, and then you can do whatever you want. Now, if you actually don't want Marxist protesters vandalizing your business or coming at your own home, all you have to do is to stop being racist. It's really that simple. You need to stop delving into racism. And if you want to know how, it's simple. You can find out online. Any person that just wants to look for the solutions can find them. And I seem to have found them on Politico. We have a very enlightened person here, uh, a professor of history, a director of the anti racismus Research and Policy Center at an American university, and an author of How to Be anti racismus I mean, what more can I ask? Like this guy, this guy is dedicating his own time, is going on political and is being like, here is wisdom. All you have to do is to reach out and take it. This guy has already made 99 steps to get closer to you. All you have to do is to make just one step in order to go next to him and accept this man into your heart. So how can we fix it? All right. To fix the original sin, original sin, 
It's like Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve bought the apple, they became racist. America should pass an anti racist amendment to the constitutions that enshrines two guiding anti racism principles. Racial inequity is evidence of racist policy and the different racial groups are equals. The amendment would make it unconstitutional for racial inequity over a certain threshold, as well as racist by public officials, which have racist ideals or public officials clearly defined, it would establish and permanently fund the Department of anti racism Isn't this beautiful? Like, don't we need more bureaucrats? Compromised of formerly trained experts, he just happens to be one, of course, uh, or racismus and no political appointees. The DOA would be responsible for uh, preclaring all local, state, and federal public policies to ensure they won't yield r uh, racial inequality, monitor these policies, investigate private racismus policies when racial inequity surfaces, and monitor public officials for expression of racismus ideas. The DOA would be empowered with disciplinary tools to wield over and against policymakers and public officials who do not voluntarily change their racist policy and ideas. Man, I already love it. Like I have such a boner for this institution. I want to work there though. I, I would love to work. Like you, you get to be in a place where you get to silence people and you make money and there's no way for you to be held accountable. Like, oh my God, that is my dream job. When I grow up, this is what I want to do. Ibram X. Kennedy, can you hire me as your apprentice? Can, can you be can you be my Palpatine and I will be your Darth Vader? Can, can we join the fight? I, I'm in. I'm in, Ibram. I'm in. Uh, anyway, right, like, so according to him, in order to get the equity, uh, I'm sorry, Indian Americans, way too much. You're earning too much. You're earning way too much. Filipino Americans, woof. Taiwanese Americans, my God, look at these racists. Sri Lankan Americans, Japanese Americans. I know you, you, you all have to go down. Like I, I'm sorry, but this is this is just way, way too much. Malaysian Americans, look Chinese. Oh my God, look at the Pakistani. Look at them. Uh, and then you have the whites, Koreans, Indonesians, and the average American. I guess these are people that didn't declare their ethnicity or are from different heritages. Uh, then you have the Thai, Bangladeshi Americans, 50,000, Nepali, Hispanic, and then African Americans. So you know what I would suggest? Like all of these people have to give shit to the people down here. You know, the ones in the middle can, can maintain their income, right? Because like this is the middle. Uh, but we just need to, if only we can just, Use our anti racismus policy to take money from these people based on their ethnicity and give money to these people based on their ethnicity. And then, you know, America can stop being racist. Is it, eh? Isn't this how it works? Isn't is this like, isn't this ushi uh, And if anyone complains, if anyone points it out, we can shut them up because now we, we have the power uh, to silence ideas. So anyone that's against this, like this is an anti-racist policy, right? So anyone that's against this must be a racist, and therefore. Also, we need to start batting Hollywood movies. This this is another very important thing, according to this article. Now I didn't see it, but this article opened my eyes. Uh, the Predator and the Alien. Okay, this this is going to be hard uh, for the initiated to understand, but how can I put this in a way that it reaches you guys? Um, Apparently, the alien, the xenomorph, represents black women, according to this article from theconversation.com. And by the way, there is no conversation on theconversation.com. The comment sections have disabilities. They're, they're disabled. There is no... It should be the echo chamber.com. But according to them, okay, the xenomorph, and this is not racist, by the way, because they, they say it. It's progressive. It's progressive. You need to, you need to start differentiating it. Um... The xenomorph represents, I guess, like how the director sees black women as breathers. And the predator is supposed to represent the black male. Okay. 
no, read the article. It's it's difficult for me to explain. I I don't have the sufficient IQ to go through this, but um, I'm curious. Like when you watch Alien versus Predator, like what the fuck is that? It's like the struggle in the black family. Like well, that that is like even racist, misogynist, and hyper problematic. <laughs> How can I get paid to write these articles? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, can you imagine you get paid to write this? Oh my, like, I, I would have so much to write. I would write how Chucky, you know, like that killer doll. I would write how Chucky is actually a movie against capitalism and consumerism. Like, who's going to buy a doll after they buy Chucky, huh? Like, yeah. <laughs> Now let's move over to antisemitismus and this happened like this actually happened on the Twitter all right like you you can look it up um the FBI records vault released a document called the protocols of learned elders of Zion. this is real all right like I, I'm not making it up all right like look if you're a YouTube moderator and you're looking at my channel i'm just reporting on it like please have mercy i see it in the wild and i have to present it to people all right because i think it's funny it's, it's not the protocols of learn the elders of zion that's funny no like that's it's the reaction to it because i i haven't read them you need to understand i did two universities i've read a lot of books i'm not i'm not reading more books like i'm not i'm not reading anything okay but from the reactions, I, I guess it must be something spicy. Like, look at this. What WTF? You are wildly irresponsible for tweeting this document without offering any context and framework to ensure that anyone looking at this document understands that this is one of the most dangerous embodiments of anti-Semitism ever produced. And they're tagging the uh, Holocaust Museum and the Auschwitz Museum. What in the world are you doing, asks Rabbi? <laughs> oh, can, can someone give me a TLDR of this? I, I, no, seriously. Um, <laughs> have you ever heard had the chance to take the phones away from the FBI? <laughs> I didn't believe this was the actual FBI until I checked. What the hell are you doing? Sharing this kind of information without any explanation. Well, see, I, I notice a lot of people asking this question, yet no one is explaining. Like, I, I, I'm really curious. I don't want to read this without context, all right? I don't want to do this, but I need the context for it. Dear House of Judiciary and Senatory Judiciary, what is going on at the FBI? I like to report a potential hate group at FBI. <laughs> you know this is hateful and fake, right? But I don't know, man. This is the FBI posting. <laughs> Shit. First off, whatever document you are trying to share is blank. Is it? If the document is blank, then why are so many people upset? What? That, I, I didn't click it. Maybe it is blank. But why are so many people? Second off, the protocols were written by anti-Semites and have been proven false. Okay. So is this the context? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be looking at the comment section. This, again, like this doesn't do that SP. This is just meh. But this, like what surrounds it, the, the surrounding is gold. But uh, speaking of extremists, Orange Man was asked about the Q Anon and uh, he gave a response. Let's listen to it. Well, at, first of all, at the crux of the theory it is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Does that sound like something? you are behind or well i haven't i haven't heard that but uh is that supposed to be a bad thing david hogg would you be interested in seeing a video post every day from now on until election day with my thoughts on what's going on
Yikes! Now I'm going to do something that was wildly requested on my channel, to talk about international news. And I have a lot of people that give me super chats. <clears throat> what? I only heard give me super chats. That's, that's my pitch for today. Uh, and they are not from the United States. Uh, some of them are from Germany. Deutschland, Deutschland, unter alles. Uh, and the others are from Brazil. So I decided to give them a present. You know, like, let me show you what Bolsonaro is doing. You know how uh, we have a pandemic, right? And everyone is wearing a mask. And you know, like, when a president goes in a crowd and picks up kids and does pictures with them? Very cringe. I know, Bolsonaro seems to be one of them. But, you know, when everyone is wearing a mask, it's, it's kind of difficult to distinguish between a midget and a child. So what ends up happening is Bolsonaro actually picks up a midget. Do you want to see this? Do you want to see this? Do you want to see Bolsonaro confusing a grown-ass man with a child? Do you think there was some kissing action going on? You know, like when you kiss the baby, like you, you're a president, you pick up the kid and you give me the smooch for the camera, huh? Is it going to be like, place your bets right now, people, place your bets. <laughs> That has to be the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Oh, this belongs in a museum. <laughs> anyway, enough with Brazil. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let's talk about Germany. If you're a German, you should sleep easy at night knowing that the government watches everything you do. And if you make a mistake, the government will punish you. Now, don't take the punishment the wrong way. The punishment is meant for you to do better because how can you do better if the government doesn't look out for you? So for example, walking your dog. You are not allowed not to walk your dog less than twice a day. So if you walk him once a day, then a neighbor can see you do that and now call the authorities. Yeah. <laughs> I saw my neighbor walking the dog only once. Only once. And you know what? The dog wasn't wearing a mask. It was a social distance. When the dog took the scheisser, the scheisser wasn't wearing a mask. The scheisser was a social distancing. And then, you know, the authorities get to step in. Uh, all jokes aside, like, is that is that really a problem in Germany? And, and how do you apply this law? Like, how... Let's say, you know, you get a visit from the officer because one of your neighbors said that you're not walking the dog twice a day. How can you prove that you are? Or is like the neighbor, the one that has to videotape you 24 hours and they can show like, look, his door was closed. There was no way to walk the dog. What if you have like one of those treadmills for dogs? You know, they actually exist. Like what, what if you have one of those? <laughs> you know, it, 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 again, like, the way the German government and the European Union should function would be to just tell us what is allowed. Just give us a list of things that are allowed and everything that's not on the list is going to be banned. And then we don't have to pay for bureaucrats anymore. Then like you don't have to spend millions of taxpayer money in order to feed the people in power because they would be useless. Like you already have the list. You know, just like have an enforcery arm have the judicial system, and there's no more need for power. Because literally all they do, all they do is they think about like what else to ban, what else to punish, what else to... And by the way, like there's already do laws that if you have a dog that is mistreated or misbehaved, you get punished, right? Like if you have a dog that's morbidly obese or a dog that, you know, has uh, problems with the growth because of you mistreating it or is not getting enough food, you get punished for that, right? Like... Can you explain to me with the German mindset, like, why is this necessary? Like, what if you have a dog that literally doesn't need more than once a day? Or what if you have a treadmill in your house? And who's going to, to, to be the person that is going to maintain um, observation that the citizens are complying with this? 
Anyway, enough about Germany. Let's talk about the Amerikanskis, which uh, apparently have one political party that has dropped under God from the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, do you know why under God is under the Pledge of Allegiance? It's an interesting question, isn't it? It's uh, something that they added during the Cold War in order to defend against Marxist subversion because Marxists were atheists. And notice how they don't particularly pick any religious denomination. I mean, you can be a Mormon, you can be a Quaker, you can be a Catholic, you can be an Evangelical. And no, it's under God. Heck, you can even be a Muslim. <laughs> the only people that have a problem with it are the atheists. Uh, in fact, the Pledge of Allegiance, as I understand it, was done in order to unify a nation like America. Because you had people coming from Germany, you have people coming from Italy, you have people coming from the UK, got a little bit of Irish, and you have to unite them because they're all from different cultures. And in Europe, they even went to war with each other, starting World War II. So they had to have like this common idea, this common goal. It's like, what brings us together? Well, we're all Americans now. We're all on this together. Uh, we're under God. We're all religious. It brings us together. Uh, Thanksgiving brings us together. American Indians and colonists, like we're all in this together. This is what Lincoln's idea. But apparently, I suppose the Democrats will have a different idea on how to bring everyone together. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it. It's going to be interesting, muy interesante, but I, I'm sure they will come up with something. But yeah, so uh, now how is America? It's not under God. I guess it's above God. Right? America above God. That's probably going to be the Democratic Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, the party of strength. Anyway, right. Uh, something happened in America. Something transpired. Apparently, um, Trump's younger brother has passed away. And uh, the Washington Post, well, wow, like, that's, that's cold, man. That's brutal. You know, apparently he passed away. A uh, man who filed lawsuit against Nice dies at 71. Well, like, you, you don't let any details escape from you, right? Washington Post, you you make absolutely sure that you cover everything. That's, that's cold, but great journalism, I guess. I mean, I, I wouldn't want my dad's funeral uh, to be mentioned by the Washington Post because it would be like V's father, man with several traffic violations, dies at 71. You know, like, it, it's... But, I, I, I mean, I, they, they, they have standards, right? Like, they really present the news as is. I mean, look at this one. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, austere religious scholar. And... <laughs> but, you know, you can't talk about America without talking about the election. And before talking about either Joe Biden or the orange man bad, uh, I want to give an honorable mention. I was told by the progressives that I should listen to black voices, and this is what I'm about to do. Do you care about black lives? The people that run Baltimore don't. I can prove it. Walk with me. They don't want you to see this. I'm Kim Klasik. This is Baltimore, the real Baltimore. This is the reality for black people every single day. Crumbling infrastructure, abandoned homes, poverty, and crime. Baltimore has been run by the Democrat Party for 53 years. What is the result of their decades of leadership? Baltimore is one of the top five most dangerous cities in America. The murder rate in Baltimore is 10 times the U.S. average. The Baltimore poverty rate is over 20%. Homicide, drug, and alcohol deaths are skyrocketing in our city. Do you believe Black Lives Matter? I do. The vast majority of crime in Baltimore is perpetrated against black people, who make up 60% of the population. So why don't we care about our communities? The Democrat Party have betrayed the black people of Baltimore. If the politicians walk the streets like I do, they would see exactly how their policies and corruption affects us. But they don't want to see it. They don't want you to see this. Go to any Baltimore neighborhood and ask this question. Do you want to defund the police? No. No. Absolutely not. 
I had three sons killed in Baltimore City. And I think if we defund the police office, it's going to be worse than that. So no, I'm opposed to that. What are you going to defund the police for? Why? How do you defend your city, your community? Families are losing people. It's not just Baltimore. The worst place for a black person to live in America is a Democrat-controlled city. It's 2020. Name a blue city where black people's lives have gotten better. Try. I'll wait. Look at this. How are children supposed to live here and play here? Democrats think black people are stupid. They think they can control us forever. That we won't demand better and that we'll keep voting for them forever. Despite what they've done to our families and our communities. Are they right? I'm Kim Klasik and I'm running for Congress because I actually care about black lives. All black lives matter. Our communities matter. Baltimore matters. And black people don't have to vote Democrat. Man, I don't know about you, but after watching that, I want to get American citizenship and then move to Baltimore so I can vote for her into office. Like, I, I want to see her walk all sassy-like and then give a speech in front of AOC's face and, and do the finger wiggle as well. Like, that, that would be so amazing. I would love that. How can I get the American citizenship, though? Hmm? It's kind of kind of difficult. Um, maybe one of you can marry me. Like, I understand gay marriage is legal, right? Like, I, I don't want any coochie coochie or anything like that. I just, you know, just want the citizenship. Is that is that okay? Like, any any volunteers? Though I, I am having a fiance, so it would have to be a religion that allows more than two people to get married. Like, do, do Islam allows? Like, I know a man can marry like three women, but can you marry like three women and a man? So I can get the scissors. Uh, you know, like, I, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I don't want to talk about it without actually understanding all of the laws. Let's look at what Mark Hamill has to say. Very important. Look at this. Here and now, I give you my word. If you entrust me with the presidency, I will draw on the best of us, not the worst. I will be an ally of the light, not the darkness. Uh, vote to defeat the dark side. Help us. Joe B. One. You are our only hope. Uh, Mark, Mark, listen to me. Grow the fuck up. Just, just stop it with the children nonsense, all right? But I'll tell you this. I can hardly wait for Joe Biden to subvert my expectations. I mean, let's listen to him speak, okay? You know what I'm saying? I, I, You're telling I, me? I got four kids, <laughs> five grandkids. Come on. My name is Jill, and this is my husband, Joe, and uh, your children may not know, but we have three children, and we have six grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? I, I, You're telling I me? Went... I got four kids, <laughs> five grandkids? Come on. What the fuck? Why does Twitter say that he has seven? Why does no one in the Biden family know how many grandkids they have? What is going on? Is this why they want to defund the police so we can't find the missing children? Are, are some kids getting disherited? What is happening here? You gotta love the optimism though. I mean, look, article after article just saying, oh, well, you know, all we need for Biden is to stay alive. Like that was an article from The Atlantic. It's basically like they just need his corporeal presence in order to beat Orange Man. Cause after that, like they, they'll figure it out. <laughs> but right now they just need him to stay alive. And now you see from political progressives are working to elect Joe Biden, but there will be no honeymoon if he wins. Like, imagine the enthusiasm they expect him to come at elections. Oh my God. Jesus. You know, like before all of the these events happened in 2020, I don't know if you guys remember it, but like a blue check mark from the that, that represented the Democrats said it didn't have to be this bad. Yeah, <laughs> you could have elected Bernie Sanders. You could have elected Buddy Judge. You could have gone for Tulsi Gabbard. No, you just had to go for the Jedi. <laughs> now, do you guys have certain relatives in your family that, 
you know, happened to be a little slow. You know, like people that went to the special needs school. And isn't it awful when you go and you visit that family and they tell that special need person to sit in his room, like not to disturb the, the adults at the table? Because I, I find that a little bit disgusting. You know, and I think like the, the Democratic Party does the same with some of its members. Um, they do not want to show them during prime time. Like they will not show them during the night. They will just show them during the day. But here I am in order to bring some of these candidates to you in all of their glory. So um, for some reason, for some reason, like the Democrats don't want them uh, to see them. But no, I as a left-leaning person, uh, I am very proud of left-leaning parties all around the world. And I, I just want to show you some, some of these very interesting individuals. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and for the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, someday. Well, I knew I forgot something about the Pledge of Allegiance. Now I know. You need to add someday after it. The more I learn, like I, I as a little Eastern European, it's, it's kind of hard to get by these American concepts. But uh, yeah, I mean, okay. So <clears throat> now that I got you all warmed up, let's get into the more interesting part. Never felt American. I don't know the Pledge of Allegiance. Those are not my systems the way that is not my president. Those are not. They're well, you know how the saying goes. If he's not your president. Then you're an illegal resident. <laughs> Man, why, why don't they uh, show more of these, you wonder? Like, you think the Democrats should start with their best foot forward and present this lady to the masses um, rather than, I don't know, like the press going for Michelle Obama speech. Like, everyone knows Michelle Obama. Show some of the fresh blood in the party. Show some of the younger audience, you know, like the, the type that mommy and daddy wants to hear about. No, but seriously, isn't Michelle Obama's speech boring? Like, we heard about her before. You know who I want to hear about during primetime news? About J. Mai. Who is J. Mai, you might ask? Well, J. Mai identifies as they, them. And they are a transgender, non-binary, gender transcendent mermaid, Queen King. Why can't folks imagine a world without the cops? Why can't folks imagine a world uh, without prisons? Why can't people expand their imaginations to include community care, to include an abolitionist future? Um, and I'm talking about like for real, for real abolition, not just watered down DNC version of abolition. Um, we're talking about abolishing the police. We're talking about abolishing ICE. We're talking about abolishing prisons. And by the way, just to understand, like, this is on television, right? Like, this is at the Democratic National Convention. It's just that it's not during prime time. It's during the day when most people are at work and they're hoping that they will not watch this. Because otherwise, I don't understand why. Why don't they put, you know, people like this lady to do an interesting motivational speech for the Americas uh, rather than Michelle Obama? I mean, let's, let's listen to the marginalized voices as they say. I have a panel. Uh, looking at trans youth issues, um, uh, we're, we've been watching state legislatures, especially here in the South, uh, targeting uh, trans youth uh, for uh, uh, trying to deny them access to health care, uh, education, and, and even access to the right to play sports. Although, needless to say, um, the mishandling of the coronavirus by the current administration is affecting a lot of people's ability to play sports but they're, they've been particularly transphobic in schools. I mean, those sound to me like very important issues. Like, why aren't they being brought up to the attention, like during prime time when most people can hear about them? I don't like that these people are being marginalized by the Democratic Party. Again, like, I, I, I would believe that someone like Michelle Obama should be the one that speaks during the day because a lot of the press is going to catch wind of it and report about it anyway. You should allow the marginalized voices to step during the prime time so they can speak, right? Like, is, is it this progress? Is it this what progressiveness and social justice is all about? Giving a voice to the voiceless? Ah, but I hear you say, you know, these are social issues. You know, like right now people are worried about unemployment. They worried about having to put food on the table. Like right now, a lot of people want to hear about the economy. Okay, so let's listen to an economist. 
this future that we all want, that we're all trying to build, um, really is about the destruction of colonization, white supremacy, and capitalism. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you know why we need though? Let's end this with a little bit of religion. Let's let's listen to a little bit of Christianity. Now I wanna point out I, I really love like the black fist. You know, like nothing tells me peace and prosperity than a fist. Is isn't this like what what what's <laughs> At the nerve to build a wall while at the same time you have in the harbor there in New York a Statue of Liberty saying give me your tired your huddled masses yearning to breathe free Jesus will say America if you don't get your act together you can you may well go to hell dun 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 So, so let, let me get this straight, like throughout the history of mankind, all of these horrible nations that had borders, all of them are going to go to hell. You know, like maybe this is going to be the new West Battle Baptist Church thingy where <laughs> every single time something bad happens, they will say, this is because you have borders. By the way, I'm just curious. I, I'm not really well versed in the history of the United States, but like um, when the Statue of Liberty uh, was being given to to the US by the French. Uh, did you guys have all these welfare benefits that exist now? Like, was, was life just as easy as it is today? I mean, did, did anything change? Because from my understanding, it used to be that people were forced to go to the new world through transportation. And later on, it was still people that were desperate to go to the America. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like a dream country that you would go to. It was no like a country that you would go because you had no other place to be and it was like a, a new beginning, right? Nowadays, I mean, if I were to be able to change Romania for America just in a heartbeat, just like that, Baltimore, baby, so I can vote. <laughs> Maybe I should stop, though, because I'm blaspheming right now, aren't I? Yes. You know what? Open borders, actually. That's a good thing. I can go to America. I don't, I don't need to marry. I, I can just go there and hopefully vote. You know? we'll, we'll bring a lot of Eastern Europeans to vote. If, if, they give, if they give immigrants the right to vote, then uh, I'll, I'll probably go there. Uh, but until then, you need to vote Democrat. Vote Democrat to give me the right to vote. Uh, YouTube, have mercy. Have mercy. This is a comedy thing, okay? Like, just, it's jokes. I'm, I'm not meaning it. All right, please, please don't punish me, Masa. Please don't punish me. Um, if you like this, remember that I have a live stream channel. I have another channel where I talk about uh, video games, comic books, movies, entertainment. And most importantly, if you really like this, I mean, if you like it at an unbelievable level and you also want some buyer remorse, then throw me either a super chat or a donation on PayPal or subscribe star. Okay, every little bit helps. I'm building Mia Casa right now, so I, I would appreciate it. Plus, I don't know how much long I will be on this platform, uh, given the interesting way the Democrats are trying to run an election. The censorship is going to be astonishing. So I would be surprised if I make it the year, but hopefully, you know. Uh, I like open borders, God. Do not send me to hell. <clears throat> Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I'll see you guys there. Take care.